Now, where does evil come from? And why have so many persons been bedeviled by evil? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I think that's verse 7. Let's look at it quickly. I'll just pick a few scriptures before I begin to navigate. It says, for the mystery of iniquity that already works or work. Only he who let it will let until he be taken out of the way. This scripture is showing us two things. Number one, the foundation of evil. The Bible calls it a mystery. But we are not disadvantaged because it's a mystery. He now tells us there is an authority that gives clearance for evil to happen. And so although the origin of evil, iniquity, is a mystery, if clearance is not given to it, it cannot happen. So our problem is not where evil came from. Our problem is actually who and how was permission given to evil. When he's talking about him that let it there, he's talking about the church. Until the church is taken away. Otherwise, why the church is yet here? The church has the authority to stop evil. And so if evil is happening anywhere, it's because him that lets evil has let it. But if him that lets evil does not let it, Evil cannot happen until he's taken out of the way. And that's talking about the rapture. And so as far as God is concerned, evil should not happen except we give it permission. The only time evil is permitted to happen is when the church is raptured. Why then is evil happening now? It's because either through ignorance we have given room to evil or consciously we have cooperated with evil. Otherwise, everything God created was good. Remember, in Ezekiel 38, verse 16 and 17, the Bible showed us the first time iniquity appeared. And it didn't tell us how it became. He only told us where it was found. Talking about the prince. Ezekiel 38, verse 15. Let's look at those scriptures very quickly. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Oh, you mean yeah? Oh, man, okay, mama. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Sorry, give me Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, 15. When the Bible was talking about the cherubim that represented beauty, look at what he said. He said, Thou was perfect. In all thy ways. From the day that thou was created. So even this being. That first opened the gate for iniquity. The Bible said from the day he was created. It said he was perfect. It said till iniquity was found in you. So you see that iniquity. The origin of iniquity is a mystery. However. Creation. Gave permission for iniquity to be found. This being was created. Now, this, 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 this is the scripture that spoke figuratively about Lucifer. You know, there is um, a debate currently that this scripture is not talking about the devil because of the epistemology of the word that Lucifer means light bearer. Light bearer is a responsibility. The angel was functioning as a light bearer in heaven. It doesn't mean he cannot be corrupt. When he became corrupt and he fell, he stopped being the light bearer. That Jesus is also called light bearer does not mean another creature was not given opportunity before Jesus to be light bearer. The Bible called Jesus light. The Bible also calls us light. So there are offices in the spirit realm that God permits creation to participate in. So this angel, this principality, this prince of heaven, the Bible speaking about him from verse 13 and he figuratively called him the prince of Tyre. It doesn't mean he's talking about a human being because the prince of Tyre was not in Eden. The prince of Tyre was not in Zion. He's talking about this personality that he was in Eden, the mountain of God. So you will know that although the prince of Tyre is used, but it's a figurative representation of another personality in the spirit. And there are many scriptures that have operated like that. Jesus looked at Peter and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't calling Peter Satan. But what Peter was carrying out at that time figuratively represented what Satan does. This is the nature of this scripture. In the garden of Eden, 
the devil was called the serpent. It doesn't mean he was a serpent. But the character that he demonstrated was figuratively of a serpent. Although the spirit could enter a serpent, but we knew that what was happening was not a snake walking. It was a spirit walking through a serpent. So when this scripture talks about this being called Lucifer as a prince of Tyre, because he spoke about him first in Isaiah 14 verse 12 to 14. And he's speaking about him here in Ezekiel 28 from verse 13 to 17. He's not talking about a human prince. Because when we saw these credentials, the prince of Tyre is not, does not have these credentials. Number one, the Bible said from the day he was made, his taps and tibrets was in him. The guy was built with his musical instrument. There's no human entity that was built like that. He said 10 precious stones were his covering. Diamond, carbuncle, gold, sapphire. There's no human being that his skin is made of diamond. So he's not talking about a human being. He said he was in Eden from in the mountain of God. There's no human being that was in Eden after Adam. So he's not talking about a human king. He's talking about a prince in the spirit. And the Bible told us from the day this prince was created, he was perfect. So God didn't create evil. He said iniquity was found in him. So even this being that brought iniquity opened the door to iniquity. Death is a mystery. And this should not be too difficult for us believers. For example, there are many things on earth we see today that God really did not create. If you look at its essence, but they are in existence. For example, as a chemist, I can tell you that water was not created. I can tell you that water is a combination of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So if we are debating from essential perspective, I can tell you God created oxygen and hydrogen. But God decided to merge it together in a ratio and water became. So God does not need to create iniquity. Iniquity can become if you understand how to combine the elements of creation. And so the Bible said iniquity was found in this perfect creation. And so this guy was the first that brought iniquity to the spirit realm. And it was because of his activity in iniquity that there was war in heaven. He said, I will exalt my throne and be like the most high. He wanted to violate the order and the ordinances of heaven. And so Micah stood up against him and there was war in heaven. And he was cast from the mountains of God. And he came to earth. The moment he came to earth, Revelation chapter 12 tells us, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The custodian of iniquity has come. And so when God created the man, God decided. Now something happened. When the guy collided with earth, there was chaos on the earth. So when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. There was no problem with earth. Suddenly, it said, and the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. There was a judgment on the earth because when that prince came to the earth, he brought chaos to this realm. And so the earth became disorderly. So when God showed up in Genesis 1 verse 2, God did not create the earth. He recreated it. Nobody knows how the earth was created. The creation of the heavens and the earth is a mystery. But in Genesis 1 from verse 2 to 31, the Bible showed us how God recreated the earth. That's why you don't know where light came from. That's why you don't know where water came from. That's why you don't know where dry ground came from. All of them appeared because they have been created in the first earth that was destroyed. So it was when this prince fell to the earth that the government of the earth was affected. And so now that God has recreated the earth, God needed a new governor on the earth realm. Because this guy was the prince that was on the earth. In Isaiah 14 from verse 12, he was the ruler of the first earth. But he decided to exalt his throne from the earth above the stars of God and become like the most high. So his office on the earth had become vacant. Now God wants to create another prince. And he said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth realm. So a new governor has been put on the earth and God warned the man. This earth is now under your government. What you do matters. Don't open the door of evil. The day you eat of this fruit, you have gone the path of rebellion. And if you rebel, the prince of rebellion will become your God. And the man took it for granted. And the same way this prince opened the door for iniquity, the man also opened the door for iniquity. And the devil came into the earth and brought chaos. And so evil is a mystery. But we know that the devil, who was first of all the bearer of light, is the one that opened the door. And we now know that the way evil came to the habitations of men was when Adam aligned to that prince and opened the door. Because when you study how civilizations are built, one of the things you notice is that spirits rule realms. And every realm a spirit is ruling, the rules and the outcome of that realm is consistent with the nature of that spirit. And so the earth too was perfect. Adam was perfect. When he opened the door to the devil and the devil came in, the character of the devil now superimposed over the earth. 
And so the earth that was once perfect also became evil. The man that was once created perfect also became evil. And that was not all. The man also became the slave of the devil that he now obeys. Because the law of the spirit states that whoever you yield yourself servant to obey he said the servant of him you are whom you have obeyed. So when he obeyed the devil he didn't just open the door to iniquity and evil. He became a slave of the devil. And because he's the first man representing the human race everything he did had a consequence on every man and on every territory that was within his jurisdiction and from that day evil became natural on the earth that was created perfect god has no offense in the matter because he didn't create iniquity iniquity was found in the heart of a prince of light he gave room for iniquity and he extended the iniquity to the earth. And the man opened the gate to the devil for the iniquity to enter his realm. And now the devil is called the God of this world. And evil is his nature. So naturally, evil dwells with men. So this is a game of authority. This is a game of legalities. I'm telling you this because everything happening in your life, there's an authority that regulates it. It is ignorance to assume that things happen. Nothing happen, happens. Everything happening is orchestrated. In fact, when you read your Bible, you are going to discover that even cities were named after spirits. You will think Egypt is a geographical location. Go and study more. If you read Isaiah chapter 19, you introduce a spirit as the spirit of Egypt from verse 1 to verse 5. In fact, the spirit of Egypt, according to verse 5, is the one that brings counsel and the counsel is the one that brings governance and the governance is the need or the reason for rulers and those rulers are not first of all men they are called enchanters men that have the capacity to interact with spirits and it's those enchanters the influence of those enchanters is what creates cultures that enthrone kings so what you are seeing is a legal structure that gives room for character of spirits to find expression. And this one is evil because the spirit whom's character is finding expression is an evil spirit. I'm telling you this so that you will know that the cancer is not just a tumor. The cancer is a manifestation of demonic intelligence. That's why many sicknesses, they don't know the, the cause. And they don't know the cure. More than 80% of the sicknesses in the world are treated. Treatment is not cure. It means manage you for as long as you can survive. So many sicknesses have no cure. From diabetes to hepatitis to high blood pressure to cancer. She is a doctor. Do we have cure for these sicknesses? They don't know what is causing it. When they say somebody has diabetes, they just discover that the sugar is shooting up uncontrollably. The buy is not produced enough to regulate it. What to do to increase the secretion of sugar? They don't know. And what to do to keep the sugar from overshooting? They don't know. So all they do is to give you drugs to create some balance. They know that the buy is misbehaving. They know that sugar level is misbehaving. We don't know why, but we can only regulate it. So the whole drugs they give you is to get your pancreas to produce more sugar, to, reduce, to produce more buy, to reduce sugar. So they, don't, they are just creating an equilibrium, but they cannot stop the sugar level from going up. That's why the best they can do is to treat because the forces controlling these things, even they cannot explain. And the Bible told us when Jesus showed up in Acts 10 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went out doing what? Delivering, healing, addressing every contradiction of man that is caused by who? The devil. Either directly or indirectly. Because this thing is a game of authority. And so, as a believer, if you don't come back to 1 Thessalonians 2, 7 and take authority to stop evil, evil will continue. This is the difference between church and hospital. This is why our principles are different. Because when you go to the hospital, they can give you treatment. But when you come to church, we give you power to produce cure. Because we know the foundation of these things that the doctor can't explain. There are many, there's a many aspects of medicine now called idiopathic medicine. Dealing with many things that they can't explain. Somebody just goes mad. They say schizophrenia. What is the cause? They don't know. 
they just discover that either the brain cells are reducing or something goes wrong. So all they do is to sedate you, to weaken you because you have become overcharged. Meanwhile, the guy is singing a song. They don't know where he's hearing the song from, but we know. We know that the song is singing. He's whispering from another realm. And so all we need to do is to shut the door of that realm and he will become normal. But the doctor can't understand it because he doesn't know the foundation of iniquity. He doesn't know where evil comes from. And unfortunately, many spiritual men are untrained. And that's why the Bible said, the natural man, the carnal man, the sense-rude man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them. He said, they are spiritually discerned. If you cannot trace it spiritually, you cannot deal with it. A generation that understands her authority in Christ must rise. Otherwise, evil will keep buffeting us and we will keep accusing God in our ignorance. Go and read your Bible. Everything God created was good. And it was very, very good. It is his creation that either manipulated what he created or opened the gate for evil to enter their jurisdiction. Because God gave them authority to rule over those jurisdictions. And so this evening, I want to talk to you briefly about the authority of a believer. I'm not talking about the authority of a prophet. I'm not talking about the authority of an apostle. I want to share with you about the authority of a believer. So you will know what to do in order to walk perpetually in dominion. Apostles have their own authority. That is consistent with their office. Prophets have their own authority. Consistent with their office. But there is a basic authority that is available for every believer. And I tell you, that authority is enough for you to live a victorious life. Now, before I delve into explaining to you the believer's authority, let me show you four things that authority entails or authority is given for. Number one, authority is given to enable you establish order and governance. So anywhere there is, a, there is disorderliness is a testimony to the absence of authority. So the problem is not the disorder. The problem is the absence of authority. The moment authority comes, order can be restored. So the first purpose of authority is to establish order and governance. Number two, second purpose of authority is to exercise dominion. Because every time you want to establish order, you will notice that there are contrary forces that want to negate it. And so should in case your order is being advanced and there is a counter force, authority now empowers you to override those counter forces and establish order, their presence notwithstanding. And so the second thing authority comes to do is to empower, to enforce dominion. The third thing authority is given for is to sustain order and heritage. Because it's one thing to establish it. It's one thing to counter opposing forces. But it's another thing to sustain it. See, many don't know how to sustain. That's why they are healed tomorrow. Next month they are sick. That's why they have a breakthrough today. Three months later they lose it. Because they don't know that authority doesn't just come to establish order. Authority also is required to sustain it. So the heritage of God that you have will take authority for you to keep it. Everything God has given to you can be taken from you if you don't know how to keep it. That's why you find many believers today, they've lost their peace. They've lost their health. They've lost their prosperity. They've lost everything God gave them because they don't know the game of authority. Meanwhile, this is one of the most important engagement of spirits. When you hear about worship, when you hear about sacrifice, when you hear about prayer, all of those things are designed to navigate authority. If authority was not in view, if dominion was not in view, if sovereignty was not in view, Worship will be useless. Prayer will be useless. So when you see spirits talking so much about sacrifice, talking all of those things are designed to keep authority in place. To show you how important authority is to spirits. Only a Christian takes matters of authority for granted. So he doesn't know his authority and he doesn't know how to exercise it. This is why there's no order in his life. This is why he cannot exercise dominion. This is why he cannot sustain his inheritance in God. He sees it in scripture that he should be healthy. He doesn't know why he's sick. He sees it in scripture that he should prosper. He doesn't know why he's poor. He sees it in scripture that his life is a shining and a bright light. He doesn't know why everything is darkness. There is lack of authority. 
if you understand authority and know how to wield it, your life can change and the difference will be like night and day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 